Any list that I can have Nicolas Cage make multiple appearances is a list worth having. Hey movie fans, in the world of superhero movies they seem to be a dime a dozen these days with just about a new one popping up every three to four months. Well, what about the ones that we don't hear about? The projects that were planned, but never came to fruition. If you delve deep enough down that rabbit hole, you never know what you're going to find. Well, today we're going to uncover the top five superhero movies that were almost made, but for one reason or another, didn't, but probably open up a whole realm of possibilities and what-ifs. At number five, we have Justice League Mortal. Directed by George Miller, it would have brought the... Justice League members to the big screen a whole decade earlier than now. So we have Justice League coming out next year, but this would have come years before. However, it might have been a tad bit confusing. What do I mean by that? This was roughly around 2006, the year Superman Returns came out. The year before, Batman Begins came out. So you had Brandon Routh playing Superman, Christian Bale playing Batman, Neither of them would have been in the Justice League movie. Yeah? Uh, what? So it would have had a completely different Superman, completely different Batman, and it would have had Army Hammer, the guy from the Lone Ranger, and the social, the, the social network being Batman, oddly enough. And yeah, considering that the next project George Miller directed was Mad Max Fury Road, I don't really know what Justice League would have been like, however, I do think it would have been very odd and confusing, to say the least, to have all these characters but not connected from the already established franchises with Superman Returns and Batman Begins. But clearly, DC was incompetent even back then. At number four, we have the first of two residual hangover effects from Batman and Robin. So when Batman and Robin came out, Warner Brothers still wanted to carry on the tradition of the Batman stories, but Batman and Robin sunk so badly that that franchise kind of ended. It went Batman, Batman Returns, Batman Forever, Batman and Robin. Those are all one universe, and they wanted to keep that universe going, but when Batman and Robin failed, they had to scrap all their plans. And so they wanted to keep the Batman name going, and so they were looking at all possible avenues to reboot the franchise. One such avenue that they were looking at was a Batman Beyond movie. Yes, they were even contemplating bringing in the original creators of the show and have them work on a script and a story for the universe. I would have loved to have seen that, but the thing is that people always forget is Batman Beyond has a very devoted fan base, but the popular culture does not know who Batman Beyond is. So I don't know how the film would have done. So, for those of you who don't know, Batman Beyond follows the stories of Terry McGinnis as the apprentice to a very elderly Bruce Wayne who's no longer Batman. He's on the end of his life, and so he basically passes on his knowledge of Batman to a new kid, Terry, and gives him all this futuristic tech because they live in the future with flying cars and whatnot. And so it's a new take on Batman in a futuristic style. I don't know if the world is ready for that just yet. I'm still holding out someday that we'll get a Batman Beyond movie. But for those who lament and say, oh, why haven't we gotten a Batman Beyond movie yet? We almost did. At number three, we have Spider-Man 4. Now, Sam Raimi's Spider-Man trilogy is kind of like the Godfather trilogy. The first two were awesome, and they got progressively better. And then the third one happened, and yeah, they're third one's terrible in both those trilogies. However, there was plans to keep the franchise going. Spider-Man 4 would have focused on Spider-Man tackling two new villains, the Vulture, played by John Malkovich, and Black Cat, played by Anne Hathaway, who would later get that kind of character of female burglar slash love interest to main character with 2012's Dark Knight Rises with Catwoman, even though they never really call her that. I don't know how this would have gone. I think this may have been a course correction, but Sam Raimi decided not to opt back for Spider-Man 4, probably in due large part to the mixed reception, to put it kindly, with Spider-Man 3, but also stories are that he was not overly pleased with the Spider-Man 4 story, so he thought he would just leave well enough alone, which, when has Hollywood ever done that? But he, he didn't really want to jump on that. But we will be seeing Vulture in the near future with Spider-Man Homecoming. This time he'll be played by Michael Keaton, and maybe someday we'll get Black Cat. At number two, 
we have Batman Triumphant. Now, I talked earlier about Batman and Robin derailed a lot of Warner Brothers' plans. They actually wanted to make more movies after Batman and Robin. Joel Schumacher directed Batman Forever and Batman and Robin. To not very what much critical reception from both critics or fans, both of them were not too pleased with both of those movies. They were often derided for being cheesy and childish, so Joel Schumacher wanted to make a darker Batman for this next time out, Batman Triumphant. He wanted to go back more towards the darker style and less vibrant, bright colors. So that's kind of what he wanted to do, which is totally fine with me after watching Ice to Meet You and a whole bunch of other ice puns from Batman and Robin. We need to go more serious. And so what he wanted to do was have Scarecrow, played by Nicolas Cage, that is inspired casting because both of them are already just unhinged psychopaths. And Harley Quinn, except this time Harley Quinn would have been the Joker's daughter out for revenge against Batman for killing her dad. Yeah, it, it sounds weird, and it probably would have been, but the whole movie would have culminated with a fight scene inside of Batman's head. Like, it would have been a dream sequence. He... In his dream sequence, he goes to Arkham, and he fights off all the criminals that he's faced in the franchise so far, and it would have had cameos from Jack Nicholson's Joker, Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman, I think Danny DeVito's Penguin. Basically, any villain in that Batman universe so far would have come back for that finale, all in the inside of his head dream fight. I don't know how it would have gone. I don't know if Joel Schumacher can do serious and not over the top, but... The premise sounds hokey and bizarre enough that even if it's not good, I'd at least be interested. And the number one superhero movie that almost happened is the one that's almost becoming the stuff of legend, Nicolas Cage as Superman in Superman Lives. Now this one actually has so much of a bizarre story and compelling story in and of itself that the making of Superman Lives has become its own documentary of what happened with this? It's actually called The Death of Superman Lives, What Happened? It's a documentary by John Schnepp. If you can find it, check it out, because the making of this movie is actually probably more interesting than what the movie would have been. So, track with me. The movie would have starred Nicolas Cage as a mullet-sporting Superman who dies in the film and wears multiple either light-up or robotic suits, and he fights a gigantic Spider and Brainiac and Lex Luthor meld into one and Superman's got this protective owl robot guarding him. Oh, and the selling point, it would have been directed by Tim Burton, the guy who did 89 Batman and all kinds of weird movies. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think Superman is dark, mysterious, and weird. Well, he is now, thanks to Snyder. But to be honest, Nicolas Cage doesn't actually look that bad in the super suit. The mullet, it came with the territory. This movie was made around the mid-90s when Superman was sporting a mullet in the comics. I don't know why. It also would have had Superman die at the end, and it, it's just really bizarre. But the film actually was already in production. They had costumes, they had storyboards, they had a script. They were about a day or two into production, and then it just stopped. The studio got cold feet. And I can understand why, because it seems so bizarre and out there. I still would be really curious to see what the movie, movie would end up like, but it definitely would have been the weirdest, by far, Superman version that we've ever gotten, because, as we all know, Tim Burton is the most sane individual out there. Well, what do you guys think? Is there any superhero movies that you've heard about that never came to fruition? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, if you like what you've seen and want to see more, subscribe to the channel or find me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram at Uncharted Media. Stay sharp, movie guys and gals.